Welcome to Around Town, featuring what's going on here in the greater Concord area. I'm your host, Dick Patton. It's a pleasure to welcome you here on a rainy day, I think in April, or maybe it's June, but I don't know. I'm a little confused with it, but it used to be April showers, brought May flowers, but this is June, and I don't know what's going to bring. But then they claim that we're going into a hot spell coming up. It always happens on graduation weekend here in Concord, right, Chief? That's right. Um... Very, very uh, cold and damp all oh, right now, and uh, um, I'll take the uh, hot and humid weather over this any any day. Well, I'll take the hot weather. I ain't crazy about the humid, but I'll take the hot weather. But it's just, it's you know, this is crazy. I mean, I know in the, in the past we've had Memorial Day weekends where we get a rainy one every so often. I can remember working at Dispatch years ago, and it rained a whole weekend up there out on Memorial Day. And, uh, you know, and we, this was a, we had, what, Friday and Saturday were nice days. Sunday was, I guess, a good day, too. But then Monday, we got our parade in, but Manchester didn't. But it was just a real day. But, you know, and then, of course, now here's June, and... I would think that the drought's gone by with, and there's been no, really, no major brush fires not going with this year in Concord because of the rain. So that's helped out a lot, and the grass is green. But all it takes is what, a couple of weeks of 90 degree weather, and then all of a sudden there goes your green grass and all that stuff. But you know, I, I looked, at, I was drove by. Carter Orchards yesterday, Carter Hill. I had to go to Murray Farms for something for my sister's birthday, and you know, the trees are all full of, you know, uh, leaves and all the everything else, so I assume it will be a good year for apples up there or peaches, but I don't know. Well, I hope so. It's, you know, it, just, it doesn't seem like uh, it was that long ago last summer where we just would had a uh, very hot and dry spell, and uh, it never rained. And like you mentioned, everybody's lawns burnt out, and yeah. bushes wilted, and gardens uh, didn't produce uh, oh. harvests. And I know. Um, so yeah, this is uh, New Hampshire. This is New England, and um, you got to live with it. And you know, hopefully, we'll have a normal summer. Yeah, I see you got the bicycle patrol back on now. We do. Uh, we have. Um, you know, about 12 officers that are, um, you know, certified bike officers. Um, and we're looking to put on between four and seven more this oh, summer. Wow. But, you know, and I think like a day like today, or even tonight too, you wouldn't have them on in this mess, no. obviously. No. But now they cover, I assume they cover just the downtown area. I mean, you wouldn't find them up on, say, by Concord Hospital or over there by uh, Clinton Street up there by Dunbarton or Bowline or up here on the Heights out by 106 or nothing, would you? Uh, they'll they'll actually um, go all over the city. So really? they'll they'll either transport their bikes to say, you know, the Heights Fire Station. Oh, um, really? They'll they'll park their cruisers oh, out okay. back. And they'll patrol, you know, some of the apartment complexes um, on the Heights. Uh, they'll go mm -hmm. in towards Keach Park, up up towards yeah. the mall, you yeah. know, down Terrell Park that that way. So mm -hmm. the, yeah, they're up on the Heights. Uh, they're up in okay. Penacook. They'll do. Uh, they'll be down in the Sewell's Falls area. Then they'll they'll ride up to the to the square. Mm -hmm. um, they are heavily concentrated their efforts, uh, especially downtown Shore Street and a lot of the neighborhoods in the South End, where there's a lot of activity that uh, that they get involved. In. It's very yeah. dense. I know I've seen them on Main Street. Taught they were doing a couple of bikes down there. Do that? Do they have to apply to be on the bike patrol, or do they just uh, just go seniority? How's that going? No, they uh, they apply, and uh, there's some criteria. Obviously, you want somebody that um, you know has endurance and some physical fitness, which they all do, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a very competitive um, process. So you're looking for that energy and that willingness to get out there, and you know, you know, when they're on the bike, they're not necessarily looking for you know, 
violations of the law. They they stop and they chat with with people in the parks and mm. the neighborhoods. Mm. So they engage in a lot of community policing type a activities and initiatives, as well as enforcing, you know, some some violations as well. So I guess I can't apply to be on the bike patrol, huh? Well, you have to be a member of the police department. Well, you know, she was a former dispatcher. I should have something to say for yeah. it. No, it's a it's a high <laughs> uh, it's a high demand. Uh, I mean, a lot of the patrol officers uh, like it because they're not you know embedded in a cruiser and they like to get out and uh, and yeah. plus they get exercise doing it. Oh sure. So until, it's, until a thunderstorm comes flying right. through and they can get off that bike fast. Yeah. And plus when it's and it's it's the ninety five degrees and it's humid. Um, they're wearing shorts. Yes. You yes. know. So. I saw them there. That's what, yeah. In fact, that's when I saw them. It was, it was warm out there on there, but and that's seven days a week, not five days. No, they they're on seven days a week. They all work different shifts. So we have officers that work the midnight shift that really? will get out on their bikes um, in the early morning hours. You know, drive the neighborhoods. Um, interesting is um, just this past uh, Saturday on June 3rd, it's gone by now, but uh, the, our bike unit uh, put on a bicycle rodeo up at the uh, Steeplegate Mall. Huh. Um, they had probably 20 to 30 uh, you know, kids show up with their parents and had a bunch of obstacle courses they could ride through and went through some bike safety tests. Uh, no, I didn't see that in the paper at all. Um, it was probably not in the newspaper. It was advertised on our website. It kind of got put together um, very, very quickly, and you know, it was advertised within the schools. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that either later this this summer or at least next next year, about this time, we'll have a, a better push and make it much more uh, oh, better. And you organized that yourself? Our bicycle officers did, yes. Hmm. I don't know if that's something that Grange would get involved with. Well, they're always looking for a partner that can advertise. They did have some partners that uh, provided some uh, some helmets for the, uh, for mm -hmm. the kids that came and some uh, some other um, you know sponsors of, of the event. It was it was kind of pushed together uh, rel relatively quick. Mm. Uh, it was the first time they have done it, you know, and you know, since I've been here, I've never seen uh, the police department do this type of a bicycle rodeo. Uh, but I think it's important that um, you know we 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 teach bicycle safety, and you know we can interact with the kids. It's really a community policing initiative. Well, there used to be, as I told you years ago. When I was a kid, they, we used to have to get our bikes inspected. And for a while, they'd give you little, little license plates to mm -hmm. put on the back of your bike. And then after that, they gave you stickers, the, the uh, stickers that you could see at night or whatever. Right. And, you know, you had to take your bike down to the police station. They would look at it. And if it had the, the, the horn, the bell or something, and some uh, light on the front or something, and reflected that or whatever... You know, then they gave you, they would put a sticker on. Right. I, I, did, I personally did not grow up in this community, but uh, the community I grew up in, I remember as a, as a, as a kid as well, um, the, the police department would show up in the parks, and you knew mm -hmm. which parks they yeah. were going to be in, yeah. and you went and you registered your bike. Mm. And, um, yeah. You know, so if your bike ever got lost or stolen, yeah. I mean, they had serial numbers, and uh, but that was, yeah. that, that's a good... Uh, you know, initiative for, for us to look at. Yeah. I mean, Dick Hoska, who was the pat patrolman back then, that was back in the early 60s, late 50s, early 60s, he was the officer that we talked with at that time down to station. I went to school with his son. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be a good, that would be something good. But, well, yeah, keep the Grange in mind for that for next year because we're always looking for something that we can help out on to do something, get involved in, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're going to do the egg hunt next year again, and we're going to, I guess, from what I understand, is that Matt Finney, a teacher over at Broken Ground, wants to bring him back, bring the egg hunt back to another park next year, downtown or something, partnering with us, so I don't know, it's a year away, it's on April Fool's Day, which is... You never going to get snow or not that year. That's true. Year, but anyway, but 
So with the graduations coming up, as we've talked before, of course, that'll kind of settle the schools down. But oh, before I forget it, though, what's going on with all these robberies? Oh, I mean, we had one across the street from us over at Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, was it last week, I think? Yeah, last week... Um, oh, they really went around. Yeah, last week uh, the city was plagued with uh, four uh, armed robberies and robberies Gee. at different... Um, businesses and um, that's uh, the responsibility of one individual um, it's still an active investigation but uh, so I, I really don't want to talk no. too, too much more about it but you know I think whenever you see robbery um, mm -hmm. you you have to um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of biased, I guess, because I've been doing this business for so long, but I automatically think of the drug industry, mm, the drugs. Mm, um, mm. You know, when people are robbing um, a Dunkin' Donuts or a gas station, um, it's it's an act of desperation, mm, really, oh, yeah. an addiction, desperation, and... Um, it's unfortunate uh, that, well, it's fortunate that nobody got injured, um, but it's unfortunate that we have that. The city of Concord does not have a, a tremendous experience uh, with that type of crime. And we have armed robberies periodically, but four in a week was just, I mean, that's, that's too much. Um, but it is likely the responsibility of a single person. <sighs> I can remember years ago when I worked at Tolls Market on Loudon Road. I used to close up on Friday nights. We'd be open to eight or nine o'clock at night, and my boss always said, if "Anybody comes in, you have to give them the money or whatever. Just you know, keep yourself safe." But luckily, I never had nothing like that happen. Um, but you know, you always had that in the back of your mind, boy. That you know, yeah. how did you know? You would know. But and of course, the heights was. I won't say safer back then, but you didn't have, we didn't have all these apartment buildings that we have now up here. I mean, it was more residential than it is now, but I mean, we didn't have, uh, well, you figure Lord Barron, but that's what it was called, we call it green now, went across from the fire station, that wasn't there. And then up across from Arnie's, up in the back, um, you know, the one across from Arnie's was Lexington Manor. That's what it was originally called. That was there. But the one up in back there on East Side Drive in Loudoun, well, that wasn't there. And then Salisbury Green and uh, Alton Woods, they weren't there either. Right. So it's Put a lot of traffic on Loudoun Road, that's for sure. Yeah, it makes you wonder who the heck was on City Council back those days that agreed to let that happen. But oh my goodness, then they all, Hodges got in there and everything built up you know yeah but um you know <clears throat> I, I don't know i uh i was surprised though now when your budget coming up before the city council have they have they done a final vote yet on cutting yours or increasing yours or? well the um the city council met on monday june 5th and they've pretty much tentatively approved the general fund budget as well as the, uh, the capital budget. Um, they've recessed the uh, final vote on it um, until the end of June, yeah, waiting on the state. Do. Yeah. Um, and so my budget is um, pretty much as I submitted um, I, the city manager added a few things that I requested, oh. and the city council has added uh, more, even more to my budget this year, um, tenta tentatively so far. Good. That's what happened. They so. got generous. That's good. Well, yeah, I, yeah, it, it's very good that they, they see the need for police service in this community. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that um, we used to have in the police department but we haven't had it for more than a decade or so is a community service aid and a community service aid is a, a civilian it's not, it's not a sworn police officer but they're going to handle um, a lot of the calls that the police officers are handling a lot of the uh, the, the smaller type things like um, you know serving paperwork delivering paperwork um, 
helping out at traffic accidents, directing traffic, handling some nuisance dog complaints. They're not going to get paid for that? Well, they're going to get paid oh, for that. Okay. Yeah, the city, city council approved approximately $30,000 for that program. And they don't have to be uh, police qualified or police trained for any of that stuff? Well, we train them in certain things, but it's an unarmed position. It's um, it, They're not police officers. Um, they, we don't certainly send them to, you know, calls where, you know, like disturbances. Um, so we've had this position in the past. Really? As a matter of fact, two of the people that we've had um, that have done that job uh, are currently police officers. So they, they hmm. actually started in this role and then, and then joined the police department. So hmm. it's a good recruiting tool, possibly, but um, they'll take away you know, anywhere from eight to 15 or more calls that a patrol officer is handling during the day, and it frees up mm -hmm. the patrol officer to do other more important things. You know, it's funny, the other day, I was sitting there, I was thinking about the heights and stuff, and I can remember years ago when they had the crossing guards out here, and the ladies that were crossing guards all had their police uniforms on, and uh, <coughs> they had, uh, a light blue uh, blouse or whatever it was, and a dark blue skirt, and they had the, the hat they wore, and it was uh, Pauline Bullock. She lived at the corner of Heights Road and Airport Road. Catherine Diamond, who was over here on East Side Drive, she just died a couple of years ago, Kay Diamond. And um, Margaret Guinness, who, whose house is still on East Side Drive, she died also a few years ago, but she was on the corner of East Side, well, she's an East Side Drive, and that road that goes up to those apartments behind her house. That was her place right there. I think it's red, or was it? at least it was red. And I think that was it. There was Pauline Bullock, Kay Diamond, Margaret Guinness. I thought there was one more, but I can't remember. There was another, but I'll never forget the day that I was crossing Loudon Road. And this car nearly hit me. I guess I don't. I don't much remember it. And boy, Pauline I K Diamond went after that officer, and who I'm at that car, and she, ooh, boy, she chewed him right out. I'll never forget. And she said, "Are you okay, Richard?" And I said, "Yeah." Of course, she knew my mother very well, but still, I said, "I didn't. I don't remember what happened." You know, I was on the crosswalk at Canterbury Road, crossing over to Longley Store, which is on where. Um, CVS is, and uh, I don't remember if my folks were there, parked or something. I don't know what happened, but yeah, that's when Loudon Road was two lanes out there those years. Yeah, Loudon Road is a tough road. Now it's four lanes, but yeah, I know, I know it when you go back and think about all the changes. But no, I uh, was curious about these robberies and stuff. No, and then I now do you have? The officers must go up in the cemeteries around Concord too, right? Patrolling every once in a while. Yes. It's going out there. Mm-hmm. So I see some stones are overturned, and I can't believe, I don't know what the heck is the matter with people. What do they get out of enjoyment of knocking over a gravestone? I don't get no, it. No, that's just uh, very disrespectful. Oh, it's like, I don't know what's the matter with them. But I said, I know I've seen an officer up there once in a great while in Blossom Hill, but I wondered about Southbrook out here in uh, Pine Grove or in East Concord, but uh, I never hear too much about them, so. No, they, uh, they, take, um, they take a drive through the cemeteries. I, mean, yeah. I, I did that when I was a patrol officer. And no, are they going to give you some more offices this year? They, um, they didn't cut you any, right? No, no, they, they, they put on two, two more last year, so the police department now has 86 sworn police officers that are authorized. Um, mm. You know, I spoke with the city manager and the mayor um, about putting on more officers this coming July. Um, but currently I have, uh, or we have as a department, we have uh, about seven vacancies. So if you added, say, two more, that would give me, you know, nine vacancies to, to fill. And uh, that would be a stretch. So, mm. you know, maybe next year we'll, we'll add a couple of more. Uh, I am looking um, at possibly, you know, I've, I've talked with the school superintendent about putting a, um, 
a school resource officer at Rumlet Middle School. Uh, so that's kind of a discussion that we're oh, having. Oh, you definitely need one there. I don't care. So that that's a, that's a discussion going forward. Uh, you know, we'll be looking at some grant funding for that to present to the council, mm -hmm. and then it comes down to you know, with all the vacancies that I have, I mean, how how mm -hmm. do I you know get the staffing to reallocate to the school? But if I don't put the officer at the school, then the patrol officers are going to the school to handle those. So it's it's a it's a push pull type of a scenario. Well. I'll tell you, and, and this was, was brought to my attention recently. There's a young man that's in 10th grade at Concord High who's being bullied very heavily. And um, I asked him, I said, why don't you, have you reported this to your teachers or somebody up there? No, I'm afraid to. Don't be. For gosh sakes, don't do anything stupid. Please, go and talk to that officer up there or the teacher or somebody. But get that to them right away. I don't care if the school year's ended. You know, you don't want that to hang over your head over until September when they start up again in your 11th grader. But, you know, it's sad when you hear this stuff. I didn't know who he was. He was dating some a girl at my... My sister's like a grandchild too, uh, but she, they met, he's a very nice kid. He's nothing, you know. He's got a, not a great complexion. He's not a rich. He doesn't come from a rich family, but he seems very polite. But when they told me that, I said, "Oh, this is not good." I said because they keep bragging how Concord High is. There's nothing that well there is going on up there, and Rumlet. Of course, again, now I'm going back back in the 60s, but Runlet was, I, it was just, and it's only because of my case, Chief, but um, it was, I was so bullied so heavily in the eighth grade there at Runlet, it was awful. And that really bothers you, because it goes right through, up through, and you, and you go through ninth, because back at that time, ninth grade was at Runlet. It was seventh, eighth, and ninth. And it kind of started in the seventh grade, but the eighth grade I got pushed into a college level class. And boy, I'm telling you, I was like a fish out of water. I couldn't, uh, and they wouldn't change you either. But it was, I was b bullied very heavily, and that's why, you know, I've, been, I've come out with some things in the last 20 years because of, of it. And, you know, so I get very defensive when I hear this stuff because it's not right. No, no. So, so bullying is a is a hot topic and has been, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a social issue uh, over the last several years. You know, you have, uh, you know, the, uh, the the cyber bullying over the, the oh yes, and, yeah, and you know, different social media, you know, really um, contributes to a lot of that. But you know, we we try to preach to. Um, you know, kids that, you know, you, you, sh you need to notify your teachers, your guidance counselors, your school administration, or the SROs. We try to make everything as confidential and private as possible, but what we want to know what's going on, and sometimes we can see it, and but quite often we don't see it. Yes. And, and that's the stuff that we want to address in the schools, because that it's inappropriate behavior. And, it is. Um, it's taken an advantage of people, and you know that's my message to anybody that's out there. Is is if if you feel like you're being bullied or harassed in school, um, you know, come talk to the school resource officer or at least your guidance counselor, mm -hmm. and and um, they're all trained to to handle that, and uh, they'll they'll get to the bottom of it. Mm. Yeah, I would say especially the resource officer. I, uh, guidance counselor might be okay, but I found when I went to the, my mind that I didn't get nowhere, and that's why I just really felt like I couldn't talk to anybody. It was, wow. it was horrible. But before I forget, I mean, I'm getting down in time. With the 4th of July coming, and I can't remember, I think they've saw, there were some bills at the legislature this year about firecrackers being illegal. What's legal or what's not legal on the 4th of July or coming up around here? Well, as far as I know, nothing has changed. Um, you know, 
hopefully uh, I can come back um, before the 4th of July. Yeah. And we can have a oh, further yeah, sure. discussion yeah, on that. Yeah, by all means. But, you know, there is um, Class A or Class B or yep. Class C yeah. type fireworks. And, um, you know, s some of them are illegal. Some of them are are, are, are legal. Uh, you got to think of these big displays that you see. Those uh, are the Class A ones. Those are the ones that you can't um, have. And then some of the smaller ones that you might see, like at a Fisher Cats game, um, some of those may be actually legal. Um, or really? stuff that they do at Black, uh, the, the pond hockey, uh, Black. Uh, well, the ones I have at the tree lighting are all Class A, Class B, and you have to get a permit for that. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of restrictions, but like, you know, if you go to any of the, the fireworks stores in New Hampshire, I think there's one on Hooksett, there's a couple on the seacoast. Oh, it's just as good a big one. Right. Um, the the stores will tell you what's legal to as a as a consumer, as a private citizen. The city of Concord does not have a an ordinance. To prohibiting the use of fireworks now there's a state law that prohibits you from using you know these big displays mm, yeah. obviously without a license um, and a permit but they'll tell you what is legal for you to use within the community we rely on um, an ordinance uh, or a state statute called disorderly conduct or a noise ordinance in mm, Concord so mm. you know if you're using these and it's disrupting you know your neighbors um, it's possible that you can get cited but chief it's the fourth of july you know it's it, the fourth it's, it's a fourth it's the fourth know? of july but at 3 30 in the morning it's 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 not appropriate but it's only midnight out in <laughs> california you know <laughs> yeah we've heard them i'm telling you we've heard them at 11 o'clock at night midnight over at jensen's there's somewhere in that area i don't know where they're coming from but boy somebody's got some big stuff somewhere yeah and it's like but you know, know but, but by the time we show up all of the evidence <laughs> is destroyed and there's nobody there so um, they all they they see the police car coming and they scatter and they've blown up all of their evidence. Oh, of course, yeah, naturally, yeah, they ain't gonna they're not gonna invite you in for a private show in this. That's right. Oh, goodness, but yeah, I wondered about there what was legal because even sparklers. I mean, down to Memorial Field, I mean, you know, we, we see them and and what makes me mad is uh, the parents, and I'm sorry, parents, but some of them are stupid, but they'll let the kids throw them in the crowd. You yeah, know, it's fire. Like, like, hello? Yeah. Somebody's going to get burnt. Yeah. You know, it's like, what is the matter with these people? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen it down at the 4th of July fireworks in yeah. Memorial Field. And there's, yeah. we got to we gotta exercise some common sense. I didn't stay last year. Was, we both were sick, and we went home and watched TV. But, you know, I still miss the Nevers band down there. Well, it is getting down to close up on here. We're down to 20 seconds, but it's been so good having you on there, Chief. And, uh, you know, and this time I remembered it's Brad. That was so embarrassing last time. But um, we can look forward to seeing you again. Yes, before the, four, before the 4th of July, we'll have you come in and just go over a few things because downtown market days will be on. The big right. car race will be coming in. I mean, motorcycle races don't affect you as much as they used to. Yeah. You know, I can remember when Loud Road was caked with them because 393 wasn't in then. And people actually would have lawn chairs sitting on the side of the road watching the motorcycles go through. Yeah, but uh, so with that in mind, have a safe uh, summer so far. And uh, you, know, you guys, good luck there. And hopefully they keep safe. And uh, we'll see you in a few weeks then. Sounds good. Um, thank th you very much. Well, thanks for joining us on Around Town. So that in mind, we want to thank Chief Brad Osgood for coming in. And uh, please contact him if you've got any questions about what's going on in Concord. I'm your host, Dick Patton. Have a great day on Around Town.